slow cooker, which is ideal because uh, it gives a nice slow simmer. It doesn't boil over or anything like that. It's nice and easy to control. And what I've got so far is just got a bit of cold water in there warming up. And I've just got some hot water oiled. I'm going to put some of that in as well just to speed up the process. And that's going to get the water nice and hot ready for putting the wool into it. So that's enough water there. That's good. And next thing to do is to put the mordant in. There's various things you can use as a mordant. I choose to use vinegar. Um, it, it means that all these pots that I'm using are all still suitable for use in the kitchen because all of my products are completely food safe. Um, so I've got some vinegar here and I'm just going to put some in. I mean this is white wine vinegar because that's what we have to happen to have around. It works better with white vinegar. Um, but basically you're going to put one tablespoon for each litre of water. And I've got two litres of water because that's what the kettle holds. So there goes one, two. And that's enough to prepare that water to make sure that the dye sticks in the wool. Okay. The next stage is to put the wool in. Before I put any colour into the water, the next stage is the wool. So I'm just going to get that now. Right. So this wool that I've got here at the moment um, has been soaking in water, just plain cold water, for a while now. Just to make sure that it's nice and wet because it will take the dye better if it's wet. And basically now I'm just going to put some of that in. I'm not going to be using all of what I've got here right now. There'll be a couple of batches here. So I'll just put this in. Just put it in slowly because it is going from cold to hot. So the last thing I want to do is to aggravate the fibres. There's no detergent in here or anything, so it should be alright, but just be absolutely careful with it. And basically the idea is to put as much as possible in this pot because you don't want the um, wool to move around as the colour is developing. So put a decent amount in. I think I can get a bit more in there. So the colours I'm going for um, are going to be blue and green, so that will give me a lovely teal colour, and mm, brown I think. So what I've got here, I've got these pots, um, which I've just got pre-made colour in them. What that is, it's just um, essentially food dye. I'll get one to show you. Just the the Wilton food dyes and um, what these do are um, if you mix them with water, fairly strong. Um, I mean I put about, I don't know, a quarter of a teaspoon of this into one of these pots and you can see the colour in there is pretty pretty strong. I would say you can see that it's green but it's a very strong dark green and because it's got to go a long way in the wool so it's obviously in the water it's going to dilute even further so you want to make them quite strong and what you do is using a pipette which I've just got some pipettes here and you just draw some of that up and then pop into here and squeeze it out you can do it a few times in one place because it's got a long way to spread. It does spread out a little bit but not very much and that's the point of this is to get this sort of blotchy effect on the wool in the dyeing process. There may even be some areas of it that are still white at the end of this. And what happens is this um, dye is going right down into the wool below here and spreading. So I can do a few others elsewhere. And where the colours do meet, obviously they're going to mix. And that's the um, where you get the lovely variegated effect. 
so just pour that in. And the the mordant, the vinegar, um, is, uh, is what is to stop the dye from um, leaching out and uh, in the wash. So it makes this colour fast. There's other things you can use with this. Um, citric acid is a particularly good mordant um, with the food safe colours. Um, you can get that in powdered form um, and you would just literally mix that in with your water as well in the same way as I've done with the vinegar. Obviously vinegar is easily um, found at the supermarket so it's an easy one to use and as I say we've just used uh, white wine vinegar here because that just happened to be what was around but I suppose any vinegar would work really. So I'm just going through adding these colours into the water and what happens is as it dyes the wool the water will actually go clear again so you know when the dye has fixed because any colour that's in the water when you've dyed it when you put the dye in, shall I say, uh, will disappear and the water will go clear again. And that's how you know that it's done. So I'll put some green in. Now I'm going to go and put some blue in. I may put more green in at the end once I've put the blue in because I, I do want them to mix together a bit and I don't want the um, green to um, set too much in the wall before the blue goes in. I want to get that lovely teal colour. Okay, and the colour of the blue is a nice bright sort of cobalt blue. It's a gorgeous colour and it mixes really well with the green to make a lovely teal colour. You could of course if you wanted to mix these colours in the pot first as well. If you wanted a specific colour and you didn't want too much of either of the colours to actually show in the their own right. So if you didn't want too much of the leaf green colour to show you could mix some of the blue into it in this form before you actually start um, putting it in the water at all. And I don't know if it's coming across on camera at the moment but the green is actually starting to appear here and here at the moment. You can probably see this bit, I'm not sure you'll be able to see this bit with the angle of this camera but um, that's where it's come down to the bottom of the pot and the heat of the water is recirculating it upwards. So that's how you know there is actually colour in here. Because on the top it still looks very white. Of course I can just literally put drops on the, t on the surface if I want to as well. But that won't go very far into the water. And of course I want to dye the wool that's right at the bottom just as much as the top. So... That's why, and you can literally push this right down and really deliver colour to the bottom of the pot as well. So if you want to do that, you can. And sometimes people actually literally just put their colour right at the edge and let it fall down and then circulate underneath. Of course, I want this to dye the wall in the centre and on the way as well so just keep putting more in I've got the brown to go in here as well so this colour will be muted a little bit by the brown I'm actually putting some of the blue right on top of where the green is coming through as well so that it helps to make that lovely teal colour that I want to achieve as well and of course these food colours are um, available in craft shops and baking shops and they're becoming more and more popular at the moment so they're becoming available more easily even supermarkets some of the large ones will have these in stock so
colour on top as you can see is getting a nice vibrant shade now. Just clean that pipette a bit. There we go. Now I'm going to go for the brown. So I've probably used about half of each of those colours at the moment. Um, so it's probably been two or three tablespoons of colour, something like that so far. Okay, and now go into the brown. And what I'm going to do is concentrate on the areas that are still white. As I say, there will still be some areas of white inside this um, pot at the end. Um, I think that can be quite nice because you get some lovely variations of colour. And obviously if I was to stir this pot all these colours would mix together and we'd get a sort of a, a very smooth blue-green colour. The brown would, die, would mute that down a bit and the more, more brown I put in would obviously mute it down even further. Um, but that's not the effect I'm looking for here. Especially when I'm spinning, I want to be able to get the lovely variation of colour coming through the wall. Um, and that's why this way of doing it is quite good because um, I'll get that effect when I'm spinning. surface there so that this top is getting colour. And we're nearly there. As you can see the pot now has the, quite a lot of colour in it showing and um, I'll show you how you can tell whether the dye has finished setting in the wall in a minute. Some more um, brown over there and over there. I think that's good. I'm getting some lovely combinations of colours coming on here, which is looking great. Right, I'll leave it at that, and this is how. You can see how well the uh, wool's taken the colour. Literally get the pipette, pop it in the side, draw up the water. What you can see, it's got colour in it at the moment. That's got some green in it. So it hasn't finished setting the dye just yet. And I wouldn't expect it to, it's far too soon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the pot on top of here. I'm just going to clean this pipette here. put the pot on, lid on, and let that not simmer but uh, sit in the hot almost boiling water for about 20 minutes or so um, and that'll set the, the dye in the wool quite well and again we'll do that test with the pipette once that's had 20 minutes and um, we'll see how well the, how clear the water is so I'll come back to you when that's happened okay